Well, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers and always thanks for watching. Well, it's time for our usual update on Pennsylvania's highways and byways. And then guess what? It's not surprising. The Attorney General of the state of Pennsylvania, Kathleen Kane, is back in the news. We'll get to all of that in a moment. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Welcome back. Well, I think if you've driven Pennsylvania's highways, you know that there's a lot of construction going on. We're going to do one of our regular updates. Bob Latham, he's the executive VP of the Associated Pennsylvania Constructors and a regular guest on the program. And joining me for the first time is Leslie Richards. She's a Pennsylvania Transportation Secretary. She was a Montgomery County Commissioner. I got that right, don't I, Secretary? You sure did. All right. Well, Bob, uh, uh, let me let me no, let me start with you, uh, Madam Secretary. Uh, you can't drive anywhere without seeing construction going on. And we're going to talk about what we should do when we get to those sites. But I don't remember a time when there's been this much construction. So what, what's give us a quick update. What's going on? Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of pavements to smooth out, there's a lot of bridges to fix, uh, a lot of investment in infrastructure that's been deferred over the years, and thank goodness to Act 89 and uh, some predictable funding sources, we're finally able to get a lot of these projects out of the pipeline. So I think I'm one of the only people, but I hope everyone takes a step back and enjoys the construction, because yeah. it means jobs, it means work's yeah. getting done, and our infrastructure's getting in better Is shape. Is it going on everywhere? I mean, I, I, I drive the state a good bit, not as much, you, you, you do a regular <laughs> commute, I know, from from Montgomery County to Harrisburg and other places for your right. in your role. Is there is it more focused in one place or is it literally everywhere? It's everywhere. I mean, we are spreading uh, the projects everywhere uh, throughout all our districts uh, here in Pennsylvania. And uh, it's, it's, it's good to see. Activity is everywhere. Yeah. Investment is needed everywhere. Our infrastructure is all aging at the same time and needs to be fixed at yeah. the same time. Now, the secretary talked about, you want to add something to that before I go on? Well, I just, I just want to reiterate, uh, like the secretary said, we deferred this for a number yeah. of years. And finally, we're, what we're seeing is, I guess, the, the fruits or the benefits of the, uh, the multimodal transportation funding bill that passed a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, Two point but, uh, and, four and the other billion th a year for a number of years. Right, and the other thing to that. point out about that bill is what it's allowing us to do is catch, catch up and repair our aging infrastructure. And as, as a result of the, the the neglect before that, you know, we weren't able to sometimes do do it right. Now we're able to go back yeah. and do it right. And these projects take a little bit longer. I want to ask you both this question. The secretary brought this up. We all get frustrated. Let's be candid. We all get frustrated to talk to our viewers out there. We get in this line and the construction's going on. But Bob, isn't it the price we pay to get these roads fixed? How do we fix them? You know, there's going to be single lanes. There's going to be delays. There's two ways of doing it. You can shut a pro you can shut a road down no, no, and, no, no. and cause detours and and get yeah. it maybe end the project sooner. And these are things that the engineers and the department weigh in t you know in terms of disruption to commerce and that sort of thing. Or you do it under under traffic. And when you do it under traffic, it takes longer. There's more staging, and it's dangerous. And it's important for people to slow down when they go through those work zones. And because if we slow down, it'll also allow, yeah. allow us to flow through those work zones at the speeds yeah. at which they were designed. How about just leaving a little more time? You know, <laughs> we're an impatient society, we're right? Always in a I'm always on a We're all impatient, but go ahead, what, right? right? No, it's true. Uh, but the good thing about having this predictable funding is we're able to go in there and we're able to do the major reconstruction projects, where before we were only able to do these Band-Aid projects, which yeah, made us go back over the same yeah, projects great point. in a much smaller amount of time. So you would see us back after half a dozen to a dozen years. Now, if uh, we have the money, which we do, we can do the major reconstruction. We don't have to ba go back and revisit uh, that piece of pavement for a what good about, 15 to 20 years. Um, excuse I'm sorry. What, what about bridge replacement, 25%, what, do I got that right, about 25% of the structural, in structural disrepair? How, how's well, that Well, we've actually made a huge improvement. So we have 25,000 state bridges uh, at PennDOT, and we're down to 4,000 structurally deficient wow. bridges, which is a huge improvement that from is. where we were. Yeah. Now, 4,000 is still a large number. Yeah. We used to be number one in the nation. Uh, now we're, you know, probably in the top 10. Uh, but we're working hard, and we've got um, some really innovative programs, our rapid bridge replacement program, our local bridge bundling program, that are going to see that number decrease even more. 
All right, this is our, we're doing this regular update, bridge, highways, all kinds of repairs and construction underway. I want to, we want to talk a little bit about the feds and what their role is in all this. And if we have some time, municipal roads, what's going on there? We'll weigh, our guests will weigh in on that and more after these words. Good. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Highway Information Association, the go-to source to learn about transportation projects and issues. Please visit pahighwayinfo.org. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Welcome back. Bob Latham and Secretary Richard joins me. We're doing a little update on roads and ro roads and bridges. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, funding for highways. It's always controversial. It's even more controversial than ever, it seems to me, in Congress. But it's critically important because states can't do this alone. Mm -hmm. Do I got that wrong? No, you have it absolutely right. Uh, we're keeping our eye uh, yeah. on federal funding. Again, it's very important for us to have predictable funding sources. Uh, Pennsylvania counts on $1.6 billion a year from wow. federal funds. Uh, a large part, 40% uh, of our capital program uses federal funds. And so, uh, we, uh, as I said, we are keeping our eye. We are hoping that Congress does exactly what our General Assembly did. And uh, putting up a tough vote uh, with Act 89, bipartisan. Yeah. This is not oh, yeah. Democrat or Republican. No, this, no. Everyone needs infrastructure. Yeah, Bob, Bob and I talked about this. Here's what I don't get. And I'm, you know, I have to be neutral on this, but let's be honest. How can we not have roads for safety, good, you know, good maintained roads and bridges for safety? How are we going to get businesses? Bob, Bob will smile here because we've been through this so many times. Well, I mean, it's, it, talking about it, the issue at the national level, the federal level, yeah. I mean, internal improvements was one of the first things that our founding fathers decided yes, was a core function of, of the national government. And it was government. controversial then, by the way, but exactly. go ahead. I guess so. But the thing is, uh, look at what it's done. Look at what rail infrastructure did for the country in the 1800s. Look at what the interstate highway yeah. system did. Look at the needs of our ports and how we get goods and services. Um, in and out. And as the Secretary said, it was not that, well, it took a while, but in the end, it was not a political liability for people to vote for better highways, better tra transit, better rail, and better biking and, and right. walking pay as, right. as well. So Congress needs to step up. We've, our Keystone Transportation Funding Coalition put forth a a proposal to our delegation, which is very similar to what we did here in Pennsylvania. You know, let's let's move the funding stream up to the refinery level. Do I have level, to ask like how that's being received? It's being I would received think very well. Our delegation, it would, our have, delegation have is not it? Uh, looks at it and thinks it's a good idea. Now the problem mm. is in Congress, you have a House of Representatives that that is. It appears to be dominated by people that don't want to do anything. Yeah. The Senate has moved a sort of a lesser bill, um, but we'll see. They've given themselves another 60 days, and as the Secretary said, I think we're very hopeful yeah. that well, at least we pass a long-term bill so right. she can have uh, predictable funding and, right. and program these projects into the future. Yeah, one of, one of the things that's sort of fascinating is that we talk about roads and bridges, but it's much more than that. I mean, it's about bike paths, it's about pedestrian access, it's freight and rail. Senator Casey has been particularly on, on uh, has, has this concern about the transportation of fuels that, you know, are potentially very dangerous. Mm -hmm. So how much of your time is now going to get devoted to sort of broadening the scope of what you do? Uh, it's, it's a big uh, focus of mine and, and Governor Wolf as well. Uh, PennDOT, while we have our highways and our bridges, we also have our waterways, our ports, our, rate, <laughs> uh, our rail, yeah. passenger and freight. Uh, obviously, we're dealing with trucking and, and uh, aviation also uh, comes under PennDOT. And one of the things Act 89 really helped us do is really stabilize a lot of our smaller transit agencies. Yeah. We've been able to consolidate. We've been able to reduce administration costs and really help them use the money for what they need, which is their operations. Right. And what we tend to forget is how Pennsylvania is literally, in a sense, a transit state. If you want to get from the Northeast to the Midwest, 
you got to go through our state. If you want to go south to north, mm -hmm. well, you maybe you can bypass us a bit and go up through New Jersey, right? But it we're, is the Keystone State. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did I not think of that? <laughs> Why did you think of that? Well, look, You're the professor. I, yeah, I want to. Yeah, that's true. I want to thank you for coming in. It's a, a great update. Well. The Attorney General, is, uh, Kathleen Kane, is back in the news. Uh, we'll get to that uh, in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania, and by the Pennsylvania Coal Alliance, representing companies involved in America's most affordable, reliable energy source. To learn more, visit PACoalAlliance.com. Welcome back to the program. Well, well, as I pointed out, the Attorney General is in the news, and it's probably not very good for her. Joining me to discuss the recent happenings, the charges against the Attorney General, Kathleen Kane, Steve Essick with the Allentown Morning Call, and Karen Langley with the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, both of them covering this story for some time. All right, Karen, you, you, you were down and you were involved in listening to Risa Furman, the DA of Montgomery County. I get five serious charges. Some of them have some parts to them. Go over just a couple of the basic charges against the attorney general, essentially for leaking and lying to a grand jury, if I got that correct. Go ahead. So, so Attorney General Kathleen Kane has been hit with a number of charges, um, including obstruction of justice, perjury, false swearing, abuse of office. Um, there was a conspiracy element to it um, because pro county prosecutors alleged that um, she was so upset about a newspaper article that appeared that um, she felt reflected negatively on her that she um, sought to, to retaliate and to embarrass the people who she believed um, correctly or incorrectly to be the sources of some of that information. So basically what you're saying is after this story came out, she went into a, a kind of a combat mode where she wanted to find out who was involved in that leak. She thought it was somebody in her office. Was that it? And, and, and was, there, was it a yes. prosecutor, Steve, named Frank Fina? Yes. Uh, uh, One of the prosecutors who worked in the AG's office. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, Fr Frank Fina and, and uh, n another prosecutor named Mark Costanza worked in the Attorney General's office for a long time under Tom Corbett. They were uh, in instrumental in the Jerry Sandusky investigation, which Kathleen Kane used to win election by saying if elected, she will um, you know, uh, probe why it took so long for them to, to charge Sandusky, who ultimately went to jail for a long, long time. Um, she blamed them with real, with no real evidence. If you read the affidavit of, of being the source for these Phil for a Philadelphia Inquirer article on the um, uh, on on how Kane ended a undercover sting operation involving bribes with Philadelphia yeah. city officials as well as some state lawmakers from Philadelphia, and then she went into what I would call a it was before my time, but a very Richard Nixon X esque <laughs> um, episode of, in the affidavit of allow you know tracking emails, re, tracking yeah. emails, trying to hack it, lack of a better word, hack into the judicial system to see what the grand jury investigation was who was testifying in her own yeah. office. She went after her own people. She went after the, the inquiry reporters, Craig McCoy and Angela Columbus. Yeah, they're people you work with, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's but, right. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's free. Game. I know, I mean, but going was, after, yeah. she went after then Chief Justice Ron Castile, yes. who was then, who is now come out with a statement about that she ought to, do I get, do you get that right? He said she ought to lose her law license, yes, I think. Yes, yes, I got I quoted, mean, this, uh, the judge is saying that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, uh, Karen, basically this sounds like she gets into this job, she has this immediate problem that comes up where she thinks she was demeaned in a story, 
and then she retaliates in a way, this is, this is what the charges are, we want to make that clear, that ends up getting her charged with these multiple felony counts. It, I mean, it, it sounds almost like I don't, you almost don't know how to describe it. It, it is um, stunning when you look at it in its entirety. Now, now bits and pieces of this have been um, have been yeah. become public and part of the news for quite some time. So it was not a surprise that this occurred yesterday. But when you look at the fact that the state's top law enforcement official um, is charged with with abusing her office in this way to, to retaliate um, against other professionals and, and yeah. former colleagues, um, it is incredible. Yeah, and, and what, what I find really fascinating in the affidavit, which, which as Karen pointed out, a, a, a lot of this ha, has, has been in, in the news prior. But the only thing that's not in the news was was the email, was so it was the computer snooping. Going into all, yes. trying to get yes. all these emails. Well, yes, uh, Risa Furman added that. You know, that, that, that's something yeah, yeah, that, yes. Montgomery County, go ahead. That, that, that's something that, that was not part of the original grand jury investigation that, that she inherited. But the most stunning thing, or I don't know what the word is, comical, is is, is she gave her driver slash security yeah. guard unfettered access to the computer systems. I mean, that is this is a, a, this is a guy who was a police chief in Dunmore, Lackawanna, who County. became her security, yeah. uh, one of her security guys, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and 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 what qualifies him? to gain access to the computer system. So he was going in, the charges that he was going in trying to, he was the one involved in trying to get these emails, right? And mm -hmm. to find out what you, you and the fourth of state were doing, right? Right. Yeah. And, and, and what um, and what uh, people in the attorney general's office in general were writing about um, about this matter. Um, it it describes the affidavit describes really a, a toxic environment within the attorney general's office mm -hmm. in which Kane is making remarks that some of her her top staff members um, feel this is threatening is, yeah, their we're jobs. Run, we're going to run to a break. I'm telling you, we uh, you know we've gone through this before with former attorney general Ernie Ernie Preate with. Two state treasurers with an auditor, with an auditor general, with two Supreme Court justices. But this is unlike almost anything that we've had in the past 30 years. You know, involving charges against leading state officials. All right, where does all this go? We'll ask the two reporters after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Inspired physicians committed to the good health of Pennsylvanians and the advancement of the practice of medicine. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by the Pennsylvania Business Council and by the Pennsylvania Business Council Education Foundation. All right, joining me is Steve Essick and uh, Karen Langley, both reporters. They've been covering uh, this business with the Attorney General Kathleen Kane. All right, Karen, I want to start with you. She says, I'm not resigning, and man, the pressure seems to be mounting, doesn't it? That's right. Um, right as soon as the charges were announced, um, she came out with a statement saying that um, she maintains her innocence. She will not resign because to do so would be an admission of guilt. Um, shortly after, um, Governor Tom Wolf, also a, a Democrat like her, um, said that, you know, while she is certainly entitled to her day in court, he doesn't see how she can um, serve as the chief law enforcement officer of the mm -hmm. state while needing to defend herself against these serious charges. And he called on her to step aside side as attorney general. Right. We have Eugene de Basquale, an auditor, the state, the only other Democrat now elected in a statewide position mm -hmm. who has said she should resign. We have Rob Teplitz, who's head of that reform caucus in the ledge. Is this likely to grow, Steve? I mean, as Democrats look at the political implications of this? I think it uh, most likely should grow or probably could grow, but the impeachment process uh, if I'm not mistaken, right, Terry, uh, it, it starts in the House, and the House Democrats. Well, now we're going. So should she resign to impeachment? Well, you think I, that's I mean, possible. It, no, no. no I mean, Talk it, about it. That's yeah, a great no. Point. I, I, I don't think. Um, 
No, I, I don't think impeachment is is, is possible. I, I I don't think that 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 they will do it. You know, I I don't think that this legislature would, uh, even though it is a Republican controlled legislature, would would want to go through that that process. Mm -hmm. I I just don't see it happening. I, we we all know. Um, or uh, State Representative Daryl Metcalf, Republican out of Butler County, he's had an impeachment, impeachment resolution, resolution yeah. for over a year now, yeah. and it's gotten very little traction. Whether it gains any any traction at this point in time, I don't know. Will, will but that, Karen, don't don't you know. they just have to? I mean, one possibility is just to let the process play out, right? That's right, and then we could have a sitting attorney general um, sitting in the defendant's chair at a trial um, and, and watching that play out. Of course, this could probably take some time um, yeah, to come to You think she goes to, to trial before 2020? I mean, it, you know how law, how, I mean, justice grinds pretty slowly, right? And her lawyers can. can bring a bunch of, go ahead. Well, I, 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 I'm just gonna say too, if, if I'm a defense attorney in this case, I mean, it's not so much, um, you know, Kathleen Kane's due process. You have these allegations of, of her and her staffers going into these um, grand jury records that they're not supposed to have access to. If those allegations are true, even mm -hmm. if they're not, a defense attorney in any civil or criminal case that, that, that was handled by a grand jury is probably filing appeals left and right or preparing them. I mean, the, this is, this is thing going, going to, be, to go on. This thing Yeah, could, it is. The, this has legs. It is a huge spider web that any defense attorney is going to look at this. Yeah. And we got two minutes. I want to go to another issue. There has been some suggestion that her law license ought to be suspended. If so, that would cause her to have to, she would literally not be able to mm -hmm. serve, right, as AG. I believe so. It's, it's the, um, she's the attorney general. Attorney is a pretty basic part of that. I think that Steve had some <laughs> yeah. conversations about that. Well, that, it, it, it's um, the Commonwealth uh, uh, Attorneys Act. Attorneys so Act, yeah. it's the Attorneys Act. She, she couldn't serve. But, sure, right. but the, um, to, to lose your law license, it, it, it falls under the Judicial Conduct Board, which as a due process process, you know, as a long due process, they, they have emergency Almost rules. as long as a trial, right? Yeah, exa <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, you know, I don't know, you know, if there's an emergency, how quickly an emergency, you know, hearing or anything yeah. could possibly make that happen. In All right, let's, let's, let's question. I mean, this thing looks like it's just going to drag out, doesn't it? That there's no, the pressure on her must be enormous to resign, however. I think that the, the, the pressure probably is immense, and, and uh, I would not be surprised if it grows. Um, the attorney general seems like someone who really makes up her own mind about mm -hmm. what to do um, for better or worse, and so I don't know <laughs> what, I, I can't predict what she's going to yeah. do in this. But at the moment, she's been fairly firm about this, right? There's been no equivocation. She's been resolute that she's not going to resign her office. And, all right, and I know I was, you all, yeah. go ahead. I was just gonna say, Wait. she's in Scranton right now? That's a bunker mentality. There you go. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, stay well.